What's poppin', beautiful people, up in YouTube playing? I put the 3 and G value, you feel me? In this vid right here, 10 wrestlers who won a match by accident, hooked to lose by WrestleMania. Res WrestleMania, you feel me? Uh, let's check it out, man. Check it out. I'll be getting it, bro. Niggas be calling out, bro. That should be happening a lot lately, too. Like, this is this is older. It's probably like maybe like 2010. Because this is CM Punk still in a WWE. But, um, yeah, like, bro, like, like, like last night, I, I felt, uh, who, who? No. Street Pop is, what? oh, yeah, no. It, it was uh, um for Clash of Titans. So that was, that was the um, Clash of Champions. That was on um, Sunday. Bro, they wasn't supposed to, they, bro, my son, I think it was a draw day. No, it was Andrew. He he kicked out, bro. Like, I, I don't know. Um. With professional wrestling being a worked athletic event with predetermined winners and losers, you think it'd be easy for things to go smoothly in the ring, with the exception of injuries or wrestlers going into business for themselves. Take a look at this right hand from Lesnar. Oh yeah, Lesnar be wild, right. bro. Nevertheless, accidents do happen, resulting in losses for uh, wrestlers really who were supposed himself, to bro. win. Well, the referee had a three count, but the match is over. That's what the referee's explaining to the girls. As we'll see, most of these matches' mishaps were compounded further since they involved WWE titles. Sometimes it just... someone slips on a banana peel, someone gets a quick pinfall. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at wrestlers who were booked to win, but accidentally lost a match. Be sure to subscribe and hit right, that notification bell for daily wrestling OG videos. Lady, it happened in a female match too lately. No, who is it? Number 1. Eve As we'll see, battle royals can be tricky, as seen when Caitlyn worked a Divas Battle Royal on Raw with the winner getting a shot at the Divas Championship. Oh, remember those days of that belt with a butterfly that on it? Was Glad trash. Tired that was trash. Well, rumor has it that Eve, who held the Divas Championship three times, was scheduled to win the match, but that didn't happen as Caitlyn accidentally eliminated her. <laughs> While Caitlyn oh. wasn't exactly high up on the Divas hierarchy, the WWE Caitlyn. decided to make know. the best of the situation and push her, eventually putting the Divas Championship on her for 153 days. Oh, 150 days? So by accident, not... I know she's dumb hair. An impressive run for someone who wasn't even booked to earn a title shot. Number two, the Quebecers. The Quebecers. While 1995 is considered a low point for wrestling, 1994 wasn't much better, especially the WWF's tag team division. Exhibit A, for awful, is men on a mission. The oddly dressed duo comprised of 500 pound Mabel and his tag team partner Mo. This of course, we can't Mabel. exclude this Oscar, summer. whose rapping skills were arguably as bad as that of WCW's PN News. On 29th March 1994, the team battled WWF tag team champions the Quebecers, aka Jacques Rougeau and Carl Ouellette. This happened at a house show in London with a behemoth like Mabel covering one of the Quebecers. The problem was that the Quebecer couldn't kick out nah. without Mabel's help, and for whatever reason, he didn't get it. Considering Mabel's penchant for accidentally crushing his opponents, the Quebecers got off lightly, no pun intended, with an accidental uh, loss rather than big, a six boy. month injury induced vacation. This I'm sorry, bro. This nigga Visser is too big, bro. Like, imagine that fat ass nigga on your body, boy. Uh. What resulted in a brief uh. title reign for men on a mission before they dropped the belts back to the Quebecers two days later in Sheffield. Incredibly, like Mabel would go on to win the 1995 King of the Ring tournament, and there was nothing accidental about that piece of classic bad booking. Number three, <laughs> Jeff Jarrett. Now watch this, Bob, oh, I fuck with Jeff Jarrett. Niggas to hit niggas with his guitar. <laughs> hey, Fire. And yeah, Deborah. 
Yeah, Accidental but... wins can be bad enough, but when they involve championships, they can make for some ugly. difficult booking situations. In 1999, Edge took Ken Shamrock's place in a title match against Intercontinental Champion Jeff Jarrett. Edge was a late minute substitute. Jarrett obviously wasn't prepared for Edge King, and it cost Jarrett. Edge won the match in his hometown of Toronto, a feel-good moment that many believed was an accidental title change. The details aren't specific on what went sideways, but the angry look on Jarrett's face appeared to be more than kayfabe. Because I am the greatest intercontinental champion nope, of Deborah all right there. Time. And uh, Edge's comments that he was shocked by his win have led to questions about this being a legit title switch rather than a whoopsies win. Jarrett's got the cover! And Jarrett's got the free! The WWE remedied the situation by having Edge drop the belt back to Jarrett the next night at the fully loaded pay-per-view. Some fans and wrestling historians believe this was just the WWF hot-shotting a title switch, but there's enough speculation to the contrary that this one is being included on our list. Number 4. Jeff, Jeff Jarrett, Jarrett again. again. <laughs> now, Edge wasn't the first wrestler to accidentally defeat Jeff yeah, Jarrett. Deborah was a distraction, on. boy. All she used to do was just show her puppies. Niggas would be like, word, that's what we doing right now? And like, <laughs> hit the nigga with the, <laughs> with the guitars over. Razor Ramon battled Jeff oh, for Drake. the Intercontinental Championship at the house in 1995. The rivals fought in a ladder match that was supposed to see Jarrett stop Ramon from climbing the ladder and retrieving the belt. Wrestling legend has it that Double J missed the climactic spot where he stopped Ramon, instead climbing the ladder at an incredibly slow pace. As anyone who has watched ladder matches can attest, they can test the viewer's suspension of disbelief as wrestlers climb up as yeah. if they have a 600 pound gorilla on their back. They take for a Ramon did not want to come off looking like an <laughs> idiot as Jarrett climbed the ladder at a snail's pace, where he was just looking for a quick title win, the bad guy climbed the ladder and grabbed the belt. Double J? Welcome, Chico. Welcome, Holding Chico. it for a few days before Double J won it back. Number I hated five, D uh, Judge Holly, Judge when he had that. The greatest that hardcore fit. champion that WWF has ever had. And to prove it, I'm going to put this title on the line 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Long before there was a 24 7 championship, there was the WWF's championship. Hardcore Championship, a belt which took on new life when the then champion Crash Holly ruled he would defend the belt anytime and anywhere, leading to its 24 7 status. Crash Holly, Mr. 24 7, the main a superstar. While matches for the hardcore strap could be impromptu, there were also sanctioned matches such as the Hardcore Battle Royal at WrestleMania 2000. He can't, bro, he was like saying, bro, they kicked Crash out. Crash retained the belt, but when Hardcore Holly covered him for the pin, Crash failed to kick out, despite a slow count by referee Tim White. Hardcore Holly, up off Crash, Tim down. Then why did, he have, why did Hardcore have the title? Well, there's a controversy here. Number six, Melina. House shows have seen their fair share of accidental losses, and while the WWE could go with the classic, if it happened at a house show, it doesn't count unless it's mentioned on television, the promotion didn't go that route. In this match, women's champion Melina defended the belt against Mickey James and Victoria, but rather than Melina getting the win as planned, Mickey James accidentally won. <laughs> she, must have, she must have been knocked out. Cause she didn't, Leading she didn't even kick out having at Melina all. Regain the belt on television. As we'll see, not only are Battle Royals tricky matches to work without an accidental loss, but so are triple threat matches. Number 7, Neville. Neville. Even the black and gold brand has seen its Wait, share Wait, did he lose? Oh, I thought it was for the Cruiserweight, cause I say, cause I, I know for the Cruiserweight joint, I think it was some, some joint stirring when, um, when, uh, Enzo. Won it from him, I think, right? I don't know. Taking title watching. switches, as seen when NXT champion Neville defended the belt against Sami Zayn and Tyson Kidd. Glasgow, Scotland was a place as the three superstars competed in a triple threat match. Now, things were going smoothly until Kidd covered Zayn for the pin and getting a 1 2 3 that wasn't supposed to happen. Since Kidd had pinned Zayn, he'd won the match and the title. Or had he? Working quickly to fix Zayn's goof, the ring announcer revealed that Zayn had been eliminated, turning the bout into an elimination match rather than a triple threat as it was originally booked. Neville came out on top, but only after some quick thinking. Number 8. Batista 
The 2005 Royal Rumble remains a historic I mean, one for what? a number of reasons, but we'll only address two in this video. First, it featured Dave Batista and John Cena battling in a heavily competitive Royal Rumble that led to them being the last two competitors and a controversial finish when they eliminated each other at the same time. I don't remember this. I don't remember this. Fans who had watched the 1994 Royal Rumble wondered if the WWE was replaying that finish where Lex Luger and Bret Hart eliminated each other at the same time. And we go out and it is Luger. No, that was Bret, I think. And they were that was a terrible this angle winners, even with each man getting a WWE anything. Championship match at WrestleMania 10. But no, that wasn't the finish. And an angry Vince McMahon rushed into the ring, leading to the second thing this match is known for: <laughs> Vince McMahon blowing out both <laughs> <Definitely ones, laughs> and having to sit on his behind while he ordered the match start back up. Think of fuck this angle. Oh. Oh. Batista then eliminated Cena as planned, and both men would go on to win world championships at WrestleMania 21. While wrestlers have accidentally eliminated themselves from Royal Rumble matches, this was a rare instance of the winner accidentally eliminating himself. Yo, the homie himself. just jump on the Paul London. Why would, uh, ah, those battle royals, how they can play havoc on a champion. In 2005, Cruiserweight Champion Paul London put the title on the line in a battle on, royal at a Wales Paul House show. Nice. As the match progressed, things came down to London, Billy Kidman and Chavo Guerrero, with London penciled in to win it. A spot where London was supposed to get thrown over the top rope only to hold on to the ropes when array, and he exited the ring, technically losing the match. However, in one of wrestling's greatest audibles, Billy and Chavo eliminated themselves at the same time, which led to referees decreeing the match had to restart with the last three competitors. However, this time, Paul London came out on top, as was originally planned. And number 10, X Park. This is the greatest moment of my life! You suck! I did it! Remember the European Championship? Well, you're certainly not alone, as it was one of the WWE's lesser-known championships. I wonder why they got rid of it for over five years, from '97 to 2002, when it was unified with the Intercontinental Championship. Mm. One such defense yeah. occurred at 1999's Royal Rumble, with X Pac defending the belt against Gangrel. At one point, Gangrel covered X Pac, but Pac failed to kick out until the referee Teddy Long had made the three count. Anyway, cover. Oh. Knowing the finish, Long did his best to save the match and announced he'd only made a two count. Fans being fans, they immediately laid into Teddy, shouting that he screwed up when it was quite the opposite. Long had saved the WWE for having to come up with a way to explain Gangrel's title win. A title win for the former Gangrel. leader of the brood would have been nice, but Gangrel would remain without any titles during his WWF career. That's all Whilst deep. those were 10, here's one honorable mention. 2009's TLC pay-per-view saw John Cena defend the WWE Championship against Sheamus in a tables match. Sheamus, who had just debuted on Raw in late October with his World Championship win, surprising many since he'd only been on the red brand for around two months. That favoritism. Oh. Some fans and pundits think Sheamus' win came out of nowhere and had to be a mistake. Consider this theory from the sportster's Chris Roberts. Cena had Sheamus on the top rope for a suplex to a table in the ring, but he was pushed off by Sheamus, who then falls to the outside of the ring, narrowly avoiding another table. The way it was set up makes it appear as though both wrestlers were supposed to go through a table at the same time, but Sheamus' table didn't break. Mm. Watch this. Now, let me see if, if, okay. if he's shoved through. Well, no, wait a minute! Oh yeah, he's I'm supposed to. Not quite sure if this was a mistake, particularly since Sheamus enjoyed a strong push for some time afterwards, including a second WWE Championship in June of 2010. The jump is here! But wrestling is full of controversial moments, and while this one has garnered some attention from fans, the jury is still out on whether this was an accident <laughs> kid or the result for the match. <laughs> But there you have a guy who wrestlers were booked to win but accidentally lost a match. Nah, bro. I'm telling you, bro, that, that's happened a lot. Like, more too frequently in recent times, bro. I'm telling you, I've seen, I've seen it happen. I'm like, bro, he kicked out, boy. Like, in like the past, I would say in a month, past month, that it happened a lot, bro. But, yeah, man.
Great video, great video. It's your boy Jim. Out of here, peace.